The Scorpion and His Teapot. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Two of our favorite constellations, Scorpius and Orion, are perfectly positioned this week to play out a celestial drama in the night sky. Plus, there's a teapot and a very tardy rabbit to throw into the mix. Also, for you planet lovers out there, we have Mars and Saturn hanging out near Scorpius and Sagittarius. And the planet Venus plays a game of celestial tag with the bright star Spica. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Okay, we've got our skies set up for just after sunset anytime this week facing southwest. Just to the left of the J-shaped star pattern marking Scorpius to Scorpion, you'll see the red planet Mars and the ring planet Saturn. As the week progresses, you'll see these planets slowly moving toward the stars of the constellation Sagittarius the Centaur Archer. At the same time, Venus is visible near the western horizon this week near the blue giant star Spica. Spica is approximately 262 light years away from us and is over seven times wider than our sun. Venus appears brighter than Spica, even though Venus is much smaller than Spica. It's a lot closer to us and since it's covered by clouds, it reflects a lot of sunlight, hence the improved brightness. Earlier, I was mentioning a celestial drama between two constellations. Well, the first player is Scorpius the Scorpion. As legend has it, Scorpius was sent by Gaia, the goddess of the earth, to punish Orion the hunter for boasting about what a great hunter he was. So while Orion was out hunting, the scorpion came along and stung him on the ankle. The gods then placed Orion on the opposite side of the sky so that the scorpion wouldn't try to sting him again. Orion's friend Sagittarius was a centaur, but he was also a very good archer. So he went to go find the scorpion to kill it in revenge for stinging his friend Orion. It can be tough to find all the stars in Sagittarius. However, there are eight stars that really stand out. They form a shape we like to call the teapot. Of these eight stars, you can use these three to mark the spout, these three to mark the lid, these four to outline the handle, and these four represent the body. As Alice in Wonderland discovered, a tea party is always a lot more fun when you invite friends to join you. So, let's modify our story a little bit and say that Scorpius, feeling remorseful for having stung Orion, invites him to have tea. Not wanting to be alone with the scorpion, Orion invites Lepus the hare to join him. According to legend, Lepus was the rabbit Orion was hunting when the scorpion stung him. Lepus the hare is a constellation just to the south of Orion. But, like our rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, our rabbit is running late for the party. If you watch the sky throughout the night, you'll see the stars slowly rising in the east and setting in the west. During the course of the night, Scorpius and his teapot are slowly moving across the sky. The problem with this is that because the gods put Orion on the opposite side of the sky from the scorpion, Orion can never catch up to the scorpion. Tired of waiting for Orion, the scorpion dips below the horizon around midnight, taking the teapot with it. Shortly after 1.30 in the morning, the handle of the teapot disappears below the western horizon. At the same time, Orion finally appears in the east. So, it isn't until almost 3 in the morning that both Orion and his lagomorph companion are completely above the horizon. Much to their dismay, the party is over and the scorpion and his teapot are long gone for the night. So, remember, if you're a scorpion and want to have a tea party, make sure your guests are nearby. And if you're invited to a tea party hosted by a scorpion, set your alarm clock. It's easy to do if you keep looking, looking up.